it's Mike here and I just wanted to take this opportunity to say a huge thank you to the 50 or so new subscribers to my YouTube channel that have jumped on board in the last few weeks. I never anticipated that so many of you would want to have joined me in my journey but I'm so glad that you have done so. I just wanted to say a huge thank you to everybody and I hope that you'll find something useful in what I'm doing. I wanted to, well, I create for me, but I create for me, but I want to share what I'm doing and share my creative process. So hopefully that somebody out there will also find something useful as I found lots and lots of useful hints and tips and I've learned from other people's art journals and their videos that I've seen on YouTube too. So if anybody gets out of my videos what I've got out of other people's then yay job done. Today I have a new art journal page for you, this one here. So I'm going to switch to overhead now and you can see the process of my next art journal page. See you soon. So we're going to be starting off using the large dilutions journal and I'm going to be covering a double page spread with tissue paper um, using the collage page. Now this is the gloss collage page. It's the only one I can actually find for sale here in the UK. I can't find the matte. For, it's very, very rare. And my bottle is, as you can see, almost empty. I'm having to fight to get some of that out. And then I'm going to cover the page completely with the collage page. I always do the right hand page first um, and then smooth the tissue paper over onto it. I never try and cover the page or both pages at one time because by the time you've got it over onto the second page it's almost dried. So you have to work really quickly with this stuff. I, I found you do anyway. So squeezing out more of that collage page onto the page there and then just smoothing it all out with a brush. Uh, I do have page protectors behind the pages um, to stop it from going onto previous pages and also pages on that I haven't used yet. So I'm just smoothing that out and I'm going to leave that excess tissue paper all around the outside mainly because it will create a barrier and stop any of the paint that I'm about to use from dribbling down the outside edges of the page and ruining any of the pages in the book that I may use in a future time. Now I'm just off camera at the moment just trying to find my distress paint and my paint daubers and I'm about to use the Adirondack Citrus at the top of the page there and then I'm going to apply the paint to the page using a baby wipe. Now I find that using a baby wipe is easier for me because I get a real even uh, coating and I don't lose um, the background pattern that I that, from the tissue paper that I actually wanted in the, the first place. And that was the Peacock Feathers Distress Paint too. So I'm just blending that in with the baby wipe. And I'll just carry on adding different colours, uh, that's the Dusty Concord Distress Paint, uh, across the page until I'm happy with the colour vibrancy. yellow paint there is the scattered straw distress paint. I'm now heat setting the page because I don't want to leave it to naturally air dry because I really haven't got the time. I really want to get on and do the page as quickly as possible. Just trimming off some of that nail of paint is no longer in any danger of dribbling down the outsides. I'll probably leave the rest of it until later on. So just going over the page with the heat tool just to make sure that all of it is dry enough to work on. So heat setting it one final time before I move on to the next stage. Uh, 
putting the paints away and I'm about to grab in some of my uh, first jelly plate prints. So these were some prints that I did actually not using a jelly plate. I did try and make uh, my own jelly plate using the instructions and the ingredients that I found on YouTube from Lindsay the Frugal Crafter, but it didn't work for me. So I'm adding those um, strips of mono prints with the Ranger Matte Medium there, um, just making sure that my brush is clean. Uh, and I'm just going to add those strips. Uh, I eventually um, ended up throwing the the aborted jelly plates away because they just didn't work for me and I actually use a glass worktop saver or a, a glass chopping board that I picked up for less than well five UK pounds um, which is right about you know, about eight dollars uh, and it worked exactly the same um, but I will be experimenting again with other um, is another one of the prints that I did um, I will be experimenting, experimenting with other um, mats in the next week or so. I do have a, um, a silicon mat that I'm going to try and use uh, on the next project. I'll, I might even do a video um, using the, the new silicon mats. Again, these are not meant for monoprinting. They're actually cookery um, equipment, um, but we'll, we'll see what happens. So I'm just adding those strips of the, uh, the monoprints onto my page. Um, using the matte medium and then once that's done and I'm happy with the placement of those I will heat set that with the uh, the heat gun again So just giving it a blast over with the heat tool there. Okay, happy with the um, the dryness of the page. It's now dry enough for me to work on. So I'm now going to bring in a TCW stencil. This is the Art Is stencil. I'm going to spray that with some acrylic spritzers. That's a it's a metallic. And it didn't really work all that well and uh, I will wipe it off because I didn't actually like it on the right hand page. Um, I'm not a big fan of turning over a stencil and removing the excess on your page like so many art journalists do. It just doesn't appeal to me. It, I left it on the left hand page because I quite liked the effect of the text behind that. I do end up covering most of it up anyway. So just giving it a final blast with the heat tool just to make sure that I'm happy that everything is well and truly dry. I have used all acrylics so that once they are dry they will be permanent and none of the colours are going to mix and blend with anything else that I add to the page in the next few minutes. So this is where the fun starts. I'm going to begin adding my collage elements to my pages. Now all of my collage elements are black and white. They're all vintage steampunk images, or images from a collection called the Steampunk Source Book, which I purchased from Amazon. Um, in it, there's a CD-ROM with all of these images for you to print off and resize to your heart's content, which I've done with a lot of these elements. I've resized to make them fit, um, and so it is gonna look a little bit strange. I will use the heat tool um, on each of the items when I've glued them down using the Ranger Matte Medium. The book does contain some great steampunk imagery. I will move the, um, the book down in a little while so you can see all the elements that I'm putting them on.
as I said, all the images on the CD-ROM that came with the, the book are high definition, so you can enlarge them to some spectacular sizes. This one's almost um, 12 inches, well, probably about 11 inches high, so, and she's absolutely adorable. Beautiful image. So adding some more steampunky style elements to the characters there. Just give it a final heat blast and then we're ready to move on to the next stage. Okay, so I'm now going to take my scissors and trim off all that excess tissue paper from all the way around the pages just to tidy it up and then we'll get on with adding our message. Okay, so we're ready to start with our quote. So I'm using the Tim Holtz alphabet stamp from um, Stamp Stampenders, no, Stampers Anonymous. And this stamp set is called Worn Text. And I do apologize if my head gets in shot too many times on this one, but it's one of those processes where you do have to lean in a little bit. I always use the Ranger Archival link when I'm doing my quotes or sayings on my art journal pages, mainly because I know it's going to be a permanent one and once it's dry, it doesn't matter if I add anything else over the top, it's never going to move. So it is one of those permanent inks that I think really does work well. So this process of adding uh, or finding all the letters to make up the words that I want to use does take some time so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to speed this up now to about four or four five times uh, what it should be normally so we can get to the end because you don't really want to see me sitting there stamping finding the right letters to spell the right words. So as my hands become a blur, you'll see the words starting to take shape. And when I have finished stamping all the words on, I will cut them out into individual blocks. So just using a trimmer, I'm going to just roughly cut them out and then I'll go back in with a pair of scissors in a moment and just tidy them up.
So while I'm cutting those out, I just thought I would mention the fact that this is the first time that I've narrated one of my art journal pages. Normally I just put in the text boxes over the video. Um, so it may be a bit of a shock to some people who have been watching my videos to suddenly hear my voice in this. Uh, like I say, it is the first time I've done one. If you do like it, if you have enjoyed it, please let me know in the comments and I will make sure that I continue and get, get better. So I'm just placing the words on the page now just to make sure that I get them in the right position um, so that it's easy to read left to right uh, and then when you scan down. And I'm just sticking them down with the Ranger matte medium. And because I've used the archival link, the ink isn't going to smudge when I put that over the top so it will work rather lovely. Okay, so now that they're all down and stuck, I'm going to give it one big blast with the heat tool just to make sure that everything's not going to move. And then I'm going to bring in my uh, Stabilo Black All Pencil and I'll go around and give them all a black border. So now that's done, I'm going to grab my um, water brush, my aqua painter, and I'm just going to go around each of the borders activating that um, watercolour. And when this dries, it, it, again, it is permanent. It is an acrylic um, paint pen or pencil. So once it dries, it will be permanent and you'll never be able to move it again. And there you go. The end of another art journal page. So I'm just going to give it a final heat blast and then all is left to be done is for me to date it and sign it and then we are finished. As I said before, it is the first time I've narrated one so do forgive me if I've stumbled over my words a little bit but you know, practice makes perfect. The more I do, the better I'll get at it. So if you have liked it, um, please do leave me a comment and give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for future videos.